Red, blue, yellow, orange, green, purple, magenta, black, and white. Each of these colors have a psychological impact on what we think and how we feel. That's why choosing the color for your brand should never be based on taste, but a strategic decision to shape your brand's image. In this video, you're gonna learn how to use color psychology in branding and marketing, so you can understand the psychological impact of color on decisions and emotions, and use them to influence how your customers perceive your brand. Now, we begin to develop an emotional connection to colors from our early childhood. This goes far beyond simple expression of likes and dislikes. Different colors affect us differently. The right color can make us feel calm, happy, or vibrant, the wrong color can invoke feelings of fear, danger, or even oppression. This notion of psychology of colors makes choosing your brand colors all the more important. It's essential to consider color meanings before committing to your brand's color scheme. And understanding the psychology behind those colors and why they're important when choosing the colors for your brand is exactly what you're going to learn in this guide. I'm going to take you through and have a closer look at color associations and their relation beyond your brand identity with reference to some examples along the way. Now, humans are emotional creatures and human behavior is often dictated by how we're feeling at any given moment. Therefore, purchasing decisions are often emotional choices as well. What we choose to buy and who we buy it from often depends on how we emotionally perceive a brand. So it follows then, of course, that if colors affect our emotions, then choosing the right color combination for your brand is one more important marketing tool that you can use to attract the ideal customer. Now, of course, color connotations vary depending on the context, and they have different meanings to different people, different demographics, different individuals. However, color theory born from numerous color psychology studies means we can outline some general understandings. Note that there are different shades, tints, and tones within each color, and we'll see that later within the color wheel when we dive into that. That means that there is scope for a whole range of associated emotions within the category red. Let's take a look at each color to give you a better idea. Red. Now, the color red is used for stop signs, sales tags, negative finances, and call to action buttons, and it's one of the most striking stirring colors used. Use it with care because it can trigger powerful emotions, both positive and negative. The attributes and the personality traits associated with red include power, passion, energy, fearlessness, excitement, but there are also negative attributes associated with red as well, including anger, danger, warning, defiance, aggression, and pain. So when should you use red within your brand or when should you stay away from it? Well, one of the most famous brands in the world, Coca-Cola uses the color red and there are many other famous examples. We'll jump into some more examples later, but red creates a sense of urgency, making it really effective for sales, but it also encourages appetite as well, which wasn't lost at McDonald's. Red also evokes a feeling of excitement, which is why fast cars and lingerie are really popular in red. But on the flip side, it does have negative connotations, including danger, fear, and anger. And some studies show that the color red actually reduces analytical thinking. So let's look at a few examples of brands that use the color red. We've got Coca-Cola, Netflix, Levi's, Canon, H&M, Virgin, Adobe, and Target. Moving on now to the color blue. Now, without a doubt, blue is the most widely used color of any brand, and it's used extensively through brands and marketing. And the reason for this is the feelings that it evokes. It evokes this feeling of serenity and calm and leans to the idea of trust and security. So a lot of businesses, a lot of brands, they want their audiences to trust their, their work, to, to trust doing business with them. So that's why so many brands use that color but it's really important to understand the context of your brand within your market and although these feelings are evoked and these feelings of trust and security although these are evoked and you might want to align with these feelings if you're going to blend in within your market then that's a strategic decision that you need to make on the attributes and personality side of things the positive attributes associated with blue include trust loyalty dependability 
logic, serenity, and security. But there are also some negative attributes associated with blue as well, including coldness, emotionless, unfriendliness, and that unappetizing feeling as well. So when should you use blue in branding? Well, as I mentioned before, blue has that calming effect on the mind, and it is considered the color of reason, strength, wisdom, and trust. So it is common for businesses like healthcare, IT, and financial institutions to rely on the color blue to communicate that sense of trust. Now, according to a YouGov survey, blue is the world's favorite color. However, that doesn't mean that it's always the right choice. And there are shades of blue that will make your audience feel sad or even cold. Now, there aren't many naturally blue foods in the world of nature, and that's why some audiences can lose their appetite with the color blue. And it's one reason that there aren't many food companies with blue in their branding. So use blue to foster a sense of calmness and dependability, but be careful because it's overuse can make you feel bland and make you blend in rather than stand out. So it's not without its risks. Some famous brands using the color blue include Facebook, Ford, PayPal, American Express, Nivea, Samsung, Intel, Visa, Dell, Nokia, and Volkswagen. Moving on to the color yellow. Now, yellow represents youthfulness, happiness, fun, and sunshine. And it can be powerful to use as a complement to darker colors. Yellow attributes and personality traits on the positive side include optimism, warmth, happiness, creativity, intellect, and extroversion as well. Now, the negative attributes associated with yellow can include irrationality, fear, caution, anxiety, frustration, and cowardice as well. So when should you use yellow in branding? Well, as I mentioned before, it is a very positive color and we see the yellow color used with the omnipresent emoji these days as well. And that iconic happy face reflects yellow's connotations of optimism and happiness and creativity. Yellow is bright and it reminds us of sunshine. So it's a great strategic color to align with that warm feeling. Yellow tints can challenge the eyesight though, while darker yellows can make people feel a little bit sick or a little bit ill. So it can evoke feelings of depression and sadness as well. So it's best to use this color very, very carefully. If you want to evoke those feelings of happiness, then it might be a good choice. Some household name brands that use the color yellow include Cat, McDonald's, Best Buy, Hertz, Post-it, Bic, DHL, IMDB, Nikon, Yellow Pages, Shell, and the Commonwealth Bank. Green. Now, it's fair to say that in recent years, certainly the last decade or so, green has been a little bit overused with eco-friendly branding and the concept of going green, but it can be easy to overlook the importance and the power of the color green within branding. From an early age, we learn to associate green with nature because it's refreshing, it's healthy, and it resembles growth. From a brand personality perspective, positive attributes of the color green include health, hope, freshness, nature, growth, and prosperity. But there are also negative attributes as well, and negative connotations including boredom, stagnation, envy, blandness, and debilitation. So when should you use the color green? Well, as I've mentioned before, green is now synonymous with the idea of being eco-friendly. And if you're getting into a market where there are a lot of players, a lot of competitors, putting the same message out there and using the color green, then it might not be the best choice. But there are many different shades and tints that you can choose from. So make it a strategic decision and understand the market that you're playing in first and foremost. But it's also important to remember that green is more than just about eco-friendliness as well. It also represents power and we see it in finances and the military. So that might be a strategic decision that you can make. It really depends on the market that you're in and the competitors that you're playing against, but it's important to understand the connotations, both positive and negative. Examples of brands using the color green are Australian Made, John Deere, British Petroleum, Energy Australia, Animal Planet, Whole Foods, Land Rover, Perrier, Android, Starbucks, Woolworths, and Xbox. Moving on to the color orange. Now, orange, like yellow and red, is warm and vibrant. It immediately attracts attention, hence its universal use for traffic cones. Its brightness inspires innovation, excitement, and confidence, 
making it the perfect choice for Home Depot to encourage you along your DIY journey. When it comes to brand personality, the positive attributes associated with Orange include courage, confidence, warmth, innovation, friendliness, and energy. But the negative connotations of the color orange include deprivation, frustration, immaturity, ignorance, and sluggishness. So when should you use orange in branding? Well, orange garners that feeling of warmth and energy because when we think of the sun, we think of that warmth and we think of that energy. So it makes it a bright, light, and fun choice for youthful, non-corporate brands. So those brands that wanna stay away from those formalities. At the same time, darker shades are associated with autumn and more earthy sensations as well. Orange is often used as an addition to grounding colors as well. So blues, blacks, browns, they're commonly used with the color orange. When using the color orange, context is absolutely key. For example, orange's negative connotations include silliness and immaturity. Yet both of these traits can be positive if you're a brand like Nickelodeon. But it's also worth to note for your strategy that orange is the color that most people consider cheap. So it's not surprising that brands like pay less use it. Brands that use the color orange include Amazon, Harley Davidson, Orange, Mastercard, Continental, Hermes, Firefox, EasyJet, Nickelodeon, Penguin Books, and TNT. Next up, we have the color black. Now, the color black is elegant and sophisticated with connotations of wealth and class. And that's why it's used in so many luxury brands from Chanel to Prada and Gucci and even Apple's simple black logo as well. Positive brand attributes for black include sophistication, security, power, elegance, authority, and substance. But there are some negative connotations with the color black as well, which include oppression, coldness, menace, heaviness, evil, and mourning. So when should you consider using black in branding? Well, when used strategically, black is an effective color associated with luxury and power. Luxury brands often use it in combination with white for that minimalist look. On occasion, using a bright color as an accent can add energy to that sophistication. However, it is crucial to be mindful of the context. Using black for a sportswear brand would be significantly different than using it for a healthcare brand, which could cause some discomfort as it's associated with death and mourning. Brands using the color black include Nike, Chanel, WWF, Hugo Boss, Jack Daniels, L'Oreal, Puma, and Ralph Lauren. Next up, we have white. Now, where black is the absorption of light, white is the reflection and highlights the absence of any color. It's associated with purity, cleanliness, and innocence. Positive personality traits of white include innocence, purity, cleanliness, simplicity, and pristine. But just like any other color, there are some negative associations with white as well, including emptiness, plainness, caution, and distance. So when should you use white in branding? Well, the simplicity of white dovetails well with the class of black, which is why it's such a classic combination. It represents cleanliness and has become the go-to for a modern look and feel. However, when poorly executed, it can feel lazy and bland. White space can also evoke emptiness and isolation, so the notion of white space in branding is helpful, but it should be used sparingly. Sleek and chic can become sterile and cold with poor execution. Brands that use the color white include Adidas, Cartier, Apple, Lexus, Prada, Sony, Tesla, and Zara. Let's move on now to the color purple. Now, historically, the color purple has been considered luxurious. And this goes back to ancient times when fabric dyes were extremely expensive and hard to come by, which meant that only royalty and upper class citizens could afford to wear purple outfits and decorate their homes with the color purple. Positive personality attributes associated with the color purple include wisdom, wealth, spirituality, imagination, and sophistication. While on the flip side, the negative attributes of purple include reflection, decadence, suppression, excess and moodiness. So when should you consider using the color purple in your branding? Well, purple lends itself well to brands that want to convey a feeling of class, sophistication and prestige. However, it can also stir feelings of excess and extravagance as well. So it's best to be careful with the color purple. Purple shades can be moody, but purple tints can provide a feminine touch. Brands using the color purple include Cadbury's, Yahoo, Hallmark, FedEx, Bing, Milka, Starlight Foundation, 
Zoopla and Taco Bell. And then we have the color magenta. Now, traditionally, magenta is seen as a more feminine color and it can be very, very impactful. It's a positive color that inspires comfort and represents hope. Magenta has successfully been used in traditional industries as a way to stand out from the competition. Some positive personality traits associated with the color magenta include imagination, passion, caring, creativity, innovation, and quirkiness. But the negative connotations associated with magenta include outrageousness, rebelliousness, flippancy, and impulsiveness. So when should you use magenta in branding? Well, as I've mentioned before, magenta is the most widely used color to portray femininity, but it's also an effective color to choose when trying to break the mold of your industry or stand apart from your competitors if they are more traditional. And that was the case of T-Mobile, using it to differentiate itself from mobile carriers using the classic blues, yellows, and oranges. Magenta works really well as an accompanying color to inject some youthful vibe into formal brands, but used in excess, it can feel a little bit eccentric and overwhelming. Brands successfully using the magenta color in their brand identity include Donut King, Bourgeois, T-Mobile, Cosmopolitan, Barbie, InDesign, Priceline, Roxy, Supre, and Victoria's Secret. So now that you understand all of these colors, all of the positive and negative associations with these colors, how do you use color psychology in your brand strategy? As you review the various psychological associations of the colors above, you may be thinking, okay, so what's right for my brand? How can I take this information and use it to make those strategic decisions? Now look, obviously there are many different ways to communicate your brand to your target audience, but choosing the best colors for your brand is one of those crucial steps. Color psychology is one factor to consider alongside aligning colors with your brand's personality. So let's dive a little deeper into the process of choosing the right colors for your brand strategy. Number one, understand your audience. Now, step one is fairly predictable. The first step in any marketing decision, any branding decision is understanding your target audience, understanding who you're trying to influence. The brand exists to serve the audience and it's in their mind that the brand is built. Therefore, defining and understanding your target audience can't be overstated. Now, when it comes to defining your target market, you might look out into the broad market and decide on a very specific segment within that market to focus on. The narrower, the better for your communication because that then feeds into your marketing activities. If you're very, very specific about who you're trying to appeal to, then getting in front of those people is a lot more cost effective than trying to approach the whole market. Now, of course, you're gonna develop an understanding of your target audience through creating buyer personas. So these are fictional characters that represent a specific portion or specific segment of your market. Now, you need to know who these people are. You need to know their likes, their dislikes, their hopes and their dreams and their biggest fears. And understanding their market demographics and their psychographics is a very good starting point to get a feel for who these people are. Now, this will help you to make ongoing strategic decisions that will be really important when determining the colors that you choose within your brand. When you know who your audience is, when you know the attributes that they have and the attributes that they're attracted to, it makes it much easier to find a color palette that will appeal to who they are. Number two, define your brand's position. Now a strong brand positioning strategy is an absolute must for all businesses striving for success. Brand positioning is all about setting your company apart from the rest and defining your unique value to the customer. Positioning is about understanding how you compare to your competition and where you will sit in the market comparatively. So giving your audience that reason to choose you ahead of your competition. Now there are many methods to do this and it's helpful to use a positioning matrix to help you define your brand's position in the market. First help you identify the gaps that exist and then to develop out that position. Now again, establishing a competitive position will help to inform your branding process. So your logo design, your slogan, and of course your color scheme, that brand identity and the color palette that you use. Now of course it's really important to choose colors that feel appropriate to your industry and authentic to your products, your services, and your brand. But it's also important to remember that you can't forget you're also trying to stand out from the competition and differentiate yourself from the rest of the market as well. Number three, craft your brand's personality and attributes. 
Now, going above and beyond simply defining your brand position, you need to firmly convey your brand's personality and attributes within your brand strategy. Personality is something that we attribute to humans, which is why it's so impactful within branding. We connect with brands in the same way that we connect with humans. We look for attributes that we like and that we're drawn to, and brands that display those attributes are more likely to get our attention. In fact, there's a word called anthropomorphize. Now, this means to attribute human characteristics or behaviors to a god, animal, or object. So we actually have a word for it because it's what we do as humans. Now, since color is such an immediately provocative tool for evoking emotions in the viewer, it's one of the easiest ways that you can convey your brand's personality to your audience. Now, of course, color isn't the only way to communicate your brand's personality, but it is super, super simple and super effective as well. Colors are jarring, they're conflicting, they evoke emotions, and when you understand the attributes that your audience is attracted to, the role that you wanna play in their lives, what you wanna to communicate to them, then your color can play a really important role in shaping how they perceive your brand. Number four, match your brand's attributes to relevant brand colors. Now, once you can clearly communicate your brand personality, your position, and your target audience who you're trying to appeal to, then you can think about choosing suitable brand colors. Do youthfulness and cheerfulness characterize your brand? If so, then maybe yellow is a good choice for your brand. Are you a healthcare provider looking to instill this calming trust in your audience? Well, if so, maybe incorporating blue into your brand identity is a good idea. Are you a luxury fashion brand or boutique looking to make a splash in the elegant and sophisticated but competitive world of high fashion? Then maybe black would be a great base, but consider other colors to differentiate your brand from the rest. And number five, create a color palette to express your brand. Now, of course, when you think about colors in brand identity, you tend to think of logos, but in fact, color psychology and branding will go beyond the logo into other elements. And depending on the business, this might include web design, in-store design, staff uniforms, and so on. As such, you'll need to understand the collection of complementary colors, otherwise known as a color palette. What colors are you going to use as primary? What colors are you going to use as secondary? How do they work together? This means choosing colors that don't clash with each other, that work well together, that play well together, that are pleasing on the eye. Now, although there is an element of subjectivity here, there are general rules to follow in finding complementary colors. This involves some knowledge of the color wheel. Now, the color wheel is a visual representation of hues arranged according to their wavelength. Color wheels allow color harmonies to be represented geometrically and show up in the relationship between primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. In other words, it's a very, very useful tool. In essence, a color wheel can take the element of chance out of simply eyeing the color combinations and provides a foolproof way of selecting colors that all go together. Here are some ways to use the color wheel to find colors that don't clash. Complementary colors. Now, these are direct opposites on the color wheel. An example of this would be purple and yellow in the Planet Fitness color scheme. Analogous colors. Now, these colors are next to each other on the color wheel. A good instance of this in action would be the green and yellow scheme of John Deere. And then you have monochromatic. Now, monochromatic color palettes make use of the one hue and they use a range of its shades, tints, and tones. An example of this is Twitter's use of blue across its content that hopes to evoke a sense of reliability. Triadic colors are colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel, while split complementary colors are base colors plus two colors that are adjacent to the base color. So these colors complement the primary color. Now within each main color or color hue as it's also known, there's also a full range of tints, shades and tones as well as different levels of saturation. So what is a tint? Well, what you get when you add white to a particular color, that is what a tint is. A shade is what you get when you add black to a particular color. And then a tone is what you get when you add varying grays to a particular color. And then of course you have saturation, which defines the range of color starting with gray at 0% saturation and ending with a pure grayless form of the color, which is 100% saturation. What all this means is there is a dizzying range of possible combinations of colors 
to create your perfect color palette. The paint company Bear stocks over 1400 different color paints, but that pales in comparison to the 1 million possible colors detectable by the human eye. The upshot, you need to spend time finding colors that represent your brand identity, that complement each other, that evoke the kind of emotions that you want to communicate to your target audience. Do you want to go with a trustworthy blue? Well, if so, what shade of blue specifically? Is it royal, pastel, cobalt, yale, baby? Each shade has different connotations and has different complementary counterparts. Number six, apply your brand colors consistently. Now, once you've thoughtfully selected your brand's color palette, you'll need to utilize it appropriately. Building brand consistency is crucial in establishing your relationship with your ideal customer. Brand recognition takes time, so you need to inject your brand's personality into your consumer touch points over a sustained period of time. Why? Well, ultimately, brand consistently considerably increases revenue over time. Now look, building brand recognition and an effective brand identity to communicate your brand strategically is absolutely critical. Choosing a brand color palette is a critical element of branding because it communicates your brand identity, your personality and your attributes to who your audience is. There are several things to consider when choosing your colors and familiarizing yourself with how the color wheel works will go a long way to a successful outcome. You'll also need to reflect on the psychology of the colors so take the time to inspect and understand the connotations of your color choices. Why? Because we now know that different tints, shades, and tones have varying effects on the consumer. It's critical that you find the right combination to convince your audience to emotionally invest in your business since emotion often drives purchasing decisions. Remember, as humans, we connect through attributes and emotions, and there are a few tools as powerful as color, to do just that. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into brand strategy, then this video will help you out. But before you do, if you wanna become a master of brand, hit that like and subscribe to get more videos like this. Until next time, brand like a master, and I'll see you in the next video.